Hi there, this is Missy McTaggart. In this video, we're going to look at the National 5 topic of composite volume. Now, this could be National 5 Maths and National 5 Applications. Now, you should have heard the word composite before. Probably at some point in your life at primary, you were in a composite class. You must have done composite area questions before. It means two things stuck together. So, composite volume is a combination of two shapes. All right. So, let's have a look. I've got three examples for you, all taken for some, from some past papers. So the first one we've got here, I just want to remind you of that little definition there. So composite shape is one that's made up of two or more shapes, okay? Now, sometimes they're stuck together, sometimes it's a shape cut out of a shape, but composite just means a combination of two. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this a shape at a time. We have a cone and we have a hemisphere. Now, I'm going to start with the cone because a cone to me is the easiest one to do. Now, formula for a cone, make sure you copy it down correctly, is one third pi r squared h. Now, I need to know the radius and the height for this one. Now, the radius is this distance here. Because these shapes are sat exactly on top of each other, they have the same radius. So if my diameter is 12, my radius is 6. So I have 1 third times pi times 6 squared times... Now, a lot of people would write 17 for the height here, but be careful. 17 is the height of the full shape. Now, the height of the cone is a bit tricky to see, but if your radius is 6, that means that all these distances here that I'm drawing in are all 6 because they're all from the centre to the outside of the sphere. So this little height up to here is 6. So it means that the height of the cone must be 11 because 6 add 11 is 17. So I'm using 11 for the height of the cone. Now, that is probably the most common place to get caught out in the exam. And then all we do is we take this into our calculator. I do it by doing 1 divided by 3. You might use your fraction button um, to do a third. And if you type it in, you get an answer of 414 point. Now, it goes 690 and keeps going. I would tell you to go to two decimal places at this point. Do not round to the nearest whole number. Keep it to two decimal places. There is a rounding part to the question with a three sig fig, but we're not going to deal with that to the end. So any interim calculations keep to two decimal places. Next, I'm going to do the hemisphere. Now, a hemisphere is just half of a sphere. Oops, I'll spell it correctly. So a sphere is four thirds pi r cubed, but it's half of that. So I stick a divide by two on there. Now, we've already discussed that the radius of this was six. So we're doing 4 divided by 3 times pi times 6 cubed divided by 2. And if you type that in, bear with me, we get 452.389. So I'm going to say 39. And then what's left to do here is get the total volume. So the total volume is adding your two answers together. So 414.69 plus the 452.39. And it gives us 867.08. Now the question, if I just remind you, said it wanted the answer to three significant figures. So with three significant figures, I would keep the 8, the 6 and the 7. The 0 does nothing. So it's just 867 centimetres cubed. So a wee word of warning, I would always try and put your units in at the end of a question. There will normally be a one question in the whole exam paper where you get deducted for not putting units. It can be in your simultaneous equation. It can be in your volume. So just be careful. Always put your units in. So if a question asks for sig fig, do not do each shape to three significant figures. Again, you'll be marked down for premature rounding. So the sig fig only comes in for your final answer. OK, so two decimal places right up until the end for me. So that's a cone in a hemisphere. My next example has got a hemisphere again. They're quite common, but this time it's got a cylinder. OK, so I'm going to start with a cylinder first on this one, because again, that's the easiest shape. Now, the formula for cylinder is not given at National 5, because technically it's a National 4 shape, but it can be included in a composite volume question. So a cylinder was just pi r squared h. It was the cone without the fraction, basically. And remember, pi r squared is the area of the circle times by the height. Now, the radius of this is half of 24, which is 12. Um, so I have pi times 12 squared. 
Again, we need to be careful with the height. So the radius of this was 12. All these distances around here are also 12. So it means that I've got 12 for the height of the hemisphere. 12 plus what makes 70? Well, that would be 58. So the height of the cylinder is 58. Again, that's somewhere you might get caught out. So we're doing um, pi times 12 squared times 58, which gives us quite big numbers this time. 26,238.58 to two decimal places. Next, I'm going to do the hemisphere. I have a sphere is four thirds pi r cubed. And then I stick on a divide by two because it's a half one. Quite often in exams, a mistake made in volume questions is forgetting to do the half or not writing down the formula correctly or not cubing it, squaring it by accident instead. So we've got four divided by three times pi times radius was 12 cubed and then dividing it by two. Type that all in one go and you get an answer of... 300, sorry, 3,100, I can't speak, 3,619.11 to two decimal places. So your total volume is the two of these added together. Now you don't necessarily always need to write this down, but I'm doing it for the sake of your examples. And if you add them together, you get 29,857. 0.69 and I'm just going to change this question to a three significant figure one and I'll explain why in a wee second. So to three significant figures that would be, if I get a wee bit more space here, that would give me two nine, the eight will change because of the five so it'll go to two nine nine zero zero cm cubed. Again I've put my units in. Now the reason I changed that to three significant figures is because that number wouldn't round to two significant figures. If I was to do it to 29,000 rounded up, it would go to 30,000. And the number 30,000 doesn't have two significant figures, it's only got one. And I don't think you'd ever be asked one like that in the exam because it's a bit of a trick question, but it's worth always maybe showing. So I'll know in future to change that question that it says three significant figures. Okay, one more question to show you, just to show that it's not always two shapes stuck on top of each other. You could have, at National 5 Apps, there's been ones where it's a cuboid with a cylinder cut out inside. We've had one before, which was a cone with a hemisphere, like inside, like a kind of paperweight. Um, and it's really difficult to find diagrams that work well to show you for these ones. But what I've pulled out is this one. This is a famous kind of dog collar question. It looks a bit like a dog collar or like a kind of ice cream tub or a lampshade, doesn't it? So what's actually happened here is we had a big cone. So we had this big outside shape here. And then we had this little cone on the top that's been cut out. So I'm literally going to do the big cone, first of all. And then I'm going to do the small cone. And this time when I work out the answers, I will take them away because it's like a wee bit cut off. So let's start with the big cone. So the big cone is one third pi r squared h because that's the formula for a cone. So I have one third times pi times, now the radius of the big cone is half of 30. So that's 15 up to there. So it's times 15 squared times the height of 24. Which if you type it in, gives you 5,654. 0.87 to two decimal places. It's 866 round into 87. The small one using the same formula would be one third pi r squared h. I'm not going to write it again though. The radius of the small one is half of this 10, so I'm using 5. Now where you'll get caught out on this one is the height of the small cone. It is not 16. It is whatever you would add on to 16 to take it up to the 24. So if it's 16 up to here, 16 plus 8 is 24. So let me just put that on. So my height will be 8 that I'm using down here. So I have a third times pi times 5 squared times 8, which gives me 209.439. So that would be 4, 4. So my total volume this time, I'm going to cheat. 
and I'm just going to write big takeaway small to save me writing those numbers. So I'm doing the 5,000 number takeaway, the 200 number, and that gives me, bear with me, gives me 5,445.43 centimetres cubed. Now I didn't mention sig fig in this one, so where no sig fig are mentioned, I always do two decimal places. So that is me showing you a couple of composite volume questions. The trick is sometimes in, as I've said, finding one of the heights of the shapes, and it's quite often um, very easy to overlook it and jump in with numbers, so please be very careful. Thanks for watching. I hope this has helped. Bye-bye.